Hi everyone. Given this virus situation, we have this very special online conference. And now I'd like to share with you some of our recent research work about the online state of health estimation on lithium ion batteries based on machine learning method. And firstly, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Xinhua Liu. I'm a lecturer of School of Transportation Science and Engineer from Beihang University, and also a visiting lecturer of Imperial College London, the Dyson School of Design Engineer. As we all know, the lithium ion battery is currently the preferred power sources for electric vehicles. However, during the usage of the lithium ion battery, the degradation process occur, which increase the internal resistance and decrease their capacity. Therefore, there is existing concerns around range anxiety and the safety concerns such as the thermal runaway problem. Therefore, the state of health is very important for the laser mine battery application in terms of their performance, safety, and the cost. However, the state of health of a battery cell is affected by many stress factors, such as electrode chemistries, charge discharge current, state of charge, and the temperature, cycle number, and the calendar duration. Therefore, the state of health of battery is difficult to be estimated. With the advanced technologies, the machine learning algorithms, for example, the neutral networks, the SUM, and other methods are suitable to learn complex patterns and have been widely used and proved to describe and estimate the aging process of a battery. And here we use this uh, database from the NASA and the cell with the LFP cathode and graphite anode. All the tests were conducted inside thermal chambers with ambient temperature, and the 124 cells were tested under different fast charging conditions until the cell's capacity dropped to 80% of the rated capacity. And the DTV analysis is also employed. The DTV methods is firstly presented by the ESE group from Imperial College London, and uh, it is considered as the, uh, a very effective tool to uh, existing SOH diagnose technologies. The DTV was designed to reach out the most pronounced entropy-related information during the cell operation but without long relaxing periods. And this figure shows the gateway plot result from the degradation test. As shown in the figure A, the intercapped of time axis is shift left as the cycle number increases due to the reduced unusable capacity. During the cell degradation, the impedance is increased and the temperature shift upwards with cycle number, as shown in the figure B. The DTV curve is plotted in C with the peak area zoomed in. Well, it's clearly visible that DTV curve is sensitive to the cycle number. This is due to the fact that the entropy profile undergoes significant changes during the degradation. And the degradation is well captured by peak feathers in the DTV curve. Well, for further quantitative analysis, the degradation behavior is attributed to the evolution of phase stages for both castles and anodes. Five stages of phases are considered for graphite electrode, labeled as peak 1 to 5. 
compared with graphite electrode. LFT cathode material is more stable and only one stage of phase, labeled as peak one, is considered. The schematic stoichiometric windows for combined phase stages is shown in this figure. And the DTV curve was decoupled into four peaks, representing the intercalation of different phase stages between electrodes pair. The figure 5 shows the overall results of the peak fitting results for the LFP graphite electrode chemistry cells. It's clearly visible that for the peak 1, 1, the peak position is shifted left and the peak height is shifted downwards as the aging processes from cycle 1 to cycle 800. The peak position is attributed to the impedance rays and the mass balancing of the two electrodes thermodynamic potential due to degradation. The peak height shift is attributed to the change of heat generation rate at different aging processes. So, as can be seen in this figure, the peaks 1 and 1 and the 1 and 5 are more obvious than others. Therefore, these two peaks are chosen as the main feathers of the DTV curve. As for the DTV feathers extraction, to facilitate the data-driven model for predicting battery cycle life, feathers from the test data are extracted. The physics-based feathers are selected to increase the model's interpretability as the most obvious indicator for phase change. The peak height of the peak 1 and 1 in DTV curve and its corresponding voltage are selected. Also, the C rate and the capacity are also selected as feathers. And the battery internal resistance increase with the aging processes, causing the temperature rise. And the increased impedance also changes the time cost to fully charge the battery. Therefore, this physical visible, for example, the internal resistance, the average temperature, the maximum temperature, and the charging time are also selected as feathers. Further, the evolution magnitude and the location of the peaks of the DTV curves can be used to identify the changes of the pre-electrode staging effect due to aging. Therefore, the location and the values of the highest peak of the ICV curve and the DTV curves are also selected as feathers. The initial correlation analysis. Since the capacity fit data is the result of complex input conditions, the correlation between the selected 12 feathers and the capacity fit is initially analyzed. The Pearson correlation coefficient is widely applied as the uh, as linear correlation indicator, which is namely the PCC method. Therefore, the PCC is adopted here to quantify the correlation between selected feathers and the capacity fit. And in this figure, it shows the PCC analysis results for the set of degradation experiments, the 9.5.9C, uh, 50%, and uh, 4.60. The PCC values for the fixed feathers 
of c bar, c gap, and c2 are zero. Apart from the three fixed feathers, this strong correlation between the nine feathers and the capacity fit Q loss are clearly visible, and the PCC value metrics are summarized in this figure. Well, as shown in the metric, the feathers DTV loss and the DTV peak are the most uh, uh, are the two most relevant feathers to Q loss with PCC values of 0 0.97 and minus 0 0.9 respectivity. Therefore, choosing the DTV as feathers is effective for predicting the capacity fit under complex battery working conditions. As for the data-driven aging model, here, the LSTM RNN uh, is used in this paper, which has two lawyers. The first lawyer consists of 150 neurons, and the second lawyer has 300. The full dataset is divided into two parts for model training and validation, respectively. The blue dot in this figure represents the training dataset and the red dot are the validation data set. Here we show the LSTM training results and the validation results. It shows that the proposed LSTM RNA model can accurately capture the highly complex aging dynamics of a battery under the wide range of fast charging conditions included in the training data set. In conclusion, this paper developed a data-driven model using the LSTM RNA algorithm to capture the complex aging dynamics of a laser mine battery under a wide range of fast charging conditions. And the second, the DTV method is used to uh, pre-process the charging and the discharging test data to extract health indicators which are then fitted to neutral networks for model training. And finally, compared with the IC and the DV methods, the DTV methods has several advantages, such as the uh, applicability to the electric vehicle battery packs with parallel connected cell under high current rates. Well, uh, as for this work, uh, it has great importance and uh, uh, of great interest to researchers and the engineers in area of battery energy storage and uh, for the development of smart and advanced battery management systems. Our future work will be focused on the digital chain framework based BMS. Given the Yogesh dependent degradation, and the highly nonlinear behavior of laser mine batteries, there is opportunity to create a battery digital twin framework which fusions data model and artificial intelligence for next generation energy storage devices. Here we show the cyber physical elements of a battery digital twin with the recent advances in machine learning, data science, and LOT. The concept of a digital twin has emerged, whereby a digital twin is a digital replica of a physical entire with a closing linking between the two. Although there are various battery characterization techniques, uh, it can be used to characterize the and understand the battery chemistry. However, most of them are limited to the uh, lab research because they use expensive equipment or need to uh, disassemble of the battery. But for the real-world application, low-cost and portable sensing techniques are needed. Here we show different potential onboard data types and the analysis techniques, including the DTV methods and the output information. 
so for the real application, um, the voltage current and the temperature and the data types are collected. Moving forward, the synthesis of this data with other data types such as stress and strain could be powerfully additive. Based on the collected data, information can be inferred from its analysis. Therefore, onboard sensing and diagnosis can be achieved. As for the future uh, BMS design, the battery man management system control and the state estimation have uh, evolved from a major empirical methods to model and hybrid model data-driven technology with the developed computing capacity, uh, data-driven and machine learning methods have revived. But there are still remains challenge in the real world applications. And here we highlight the combined hybrid model and the data approach that uh, leverage real time data collection from LOT enabled system toward a battery digital chain. And these are the work from our group. And finally, I'd like to uh, thank my uh, team leaders and team members and our collaborators, especially from Imperial College London. And that's all. Thank you.